Hey guys, and welcome back. Let's start it. Oh, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. Cut. Retry. You go for it. All right. Welcome back to Fan Talk. Uh, I'm David. I'm Simon. And today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, Honest Trailer for Dark Phoenix. I think that this will be skewered. <laughs> well, we've had a little, couple of conversations about Dark Phoenix, and like I said, it, it took me a while to watch it. I didn't go watch it in theaters. I feel kind of bad about that because the movie needed the help. And uh, again, I love X-Men, and I will say this before we go into this, what is going to be undoubtedly a lot of bashing and ripping, that <laughs> for a X-Men movie, it wasn't horrible. It was entertaining. If you've liked X-Men films, I feel like you'll like this one. It's better than Wolverine Origins. Definitely. Uh, but definitely there's a lot of things that you can make a movie goer crazy and make you cringe and want to pull your hair out. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of that in this. So without any ado, let's go ahead and watch this. All right. <laughs> From Disney comes the last film in this X-Universe to remind us that just like the human body, when a franchise dies, it craps itself. (laughs) Dark Phoenix. Yep, that's what I thought of it. (laughs) Roll the dice on the latest X-Men joy. An IP that's given us the highest highs, the lowest lows, and the middlest mids. (laughs) To revisit the Dark Phoenix storyline from X-Men 3, only this time, we really get to know Jean Grey. No? Not really? Mm -hmm. Okay, but we're exploring the cosmic potential of the Phoenix Force. No? No. After the intro, it's all on Earth? Okay, fine. (laughs) We're finally seeing what a new creative team can do with this material. No? Same guy who wrote X-Men Last Stand, but now he's directing two? Oh, God. You know what they say, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, and you could probably fool me again, because I like the cartoon and nerds are easy marks. (laughs) (laughs) On X-Men. Just kidding, doesn't matter, because no one will explain how or why Magneto is a free man after the last movie, or how the X-Men have a hotline to the president after this happened, or why they keep skipping decades even though it puts these characters in their 50s now. 50s. But whatever, pretend this is the first one you've seen, and thrill as Jean Grey fights an evil space cloud. A monotone space alien. If we can control that power, we can resurrect our race. Begin again. And a consistent American accent. I don't have a home. You made sure of that. In a story that banks on you caring about a character who's barely on the screen before this. It's almost like focusing on Mystique for the last three movies was, now hear me out, a bad choice. Mutant and proud. Audience and over it. <laughs> so, X-Men, how you come to expect them by now? Annoyed. Bored. There's always a speech, but nobody cares anymore. And way too famous to sit for makeup, but they'll step aside to give the new mutants something to do. Er, rather, these mutants. Like Cyclops, whose random F-bomb in a PG-13 movie is the closest he comes to a personality. If you touch her, I will f***ing kill you. Quicksilver, who's once again sidelined before his powers make everyone else pointless. <laughs> Nightcrawler, who's gone from thriller fan to killer man. And Storm, who's been so conditioned to have nothing to do that she lets it pour rain at a funeral. Uh, now the whole mansion is going to smell like a wet dog. Gross. <laughs> Ever wonder what it would look like if you got to make the next X-Men? Probably something like this. <laughs> because this is the director's first movie, and he's spending $200 million on his student film, showing off exactly how superhero actors look if it's not handled with care and expertise. <laughs> morons. They look like absolute morons. <laughs> okay, okay, Michael, pretend you're trying to open a jar with your mind. Sophie, you too. Harder. Harder. Push your hands out more. Way more. Don't worry, it'll look cool later. <laughs> oh, man, I'm in way over my head. So press X to pay respects to the final terrible movie of the current X-Men franchise (laughs) that you could blame on the writer-director failing upwards or last-minute reshoots to make it less like Captain Marvel or the main cast wishing they were dead. Now we're the only ones left. Or you could choose to remember all the good times, forget this ever happened, and maybe try reading some X-Men comics instead. 
Did you know they made books out of all these movies? There's even pictures inside. Pictures. <laughs> Starring Lady Bird, Charlie and the Child Soldier Factory. Let's see them aliens. Old Magneto had a farm. X-Men Origins. Frasier. <laughs> Quoth the Raven, please no more. <laughs> Taser face. Gotta go fast. Jake Gyllenhaal. I'm not here to make friends. And the MCU stealing the X-Men? Oh, I get it. X-Men 4, X3, Take 2, The Last One. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jean did not have this much blood on her when she flew away. Whose blood is this? Whose blood is it? Jean, did you kill Cyclops off screen again? <laughs> Me think, why waste... <laughs> whose blood is this? Whose blood is this? <laughs> whose blood is this? <laughs> we don't know whose blood that is. Oh wait, it's Raymond's. Nice, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they didn't even tear it up as much as they could have. Uh, you know, there could have been a lot more done that wasn't touched upon. But uh, I'm uh, sure the what hit the cutting room floor was <laughs> quite a bit. Yes, yes. Uh, it was uh, it was uh, videos are always great to watch, and I uh, they're usually spot on. At least it's you know hitting on the big topics of you know what's wrong with the particular Picture. movies they're doing. Yeah, we spend a lot of time talking about like you know hey the good things about films and like you know like for fans so, like there's a lot of people even me I'll go watch something and I might even enjoy it but then like later you're like man that really wasn't good and I probably won't watch that again you yeah. know I, I watched it once I enjoyed it for what it was but I'm not going to watch it again and we've kind of stayed away from a lot of like nitpicking yeah uh, at some point we might dive into some of some of that you know well, I think like, we might like do like special episodes here and there where like, okay we're gonna deep dive on what's like, wrong with what's the, wrong with this but generally we're 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 movie fans, not necessarily uh, critics with, uh, yeah, by trade. By so trade. we're going to be focusing on the things that we like about. But, the but a lot of these guys do it so well. But uh, yeah, I still love these kind of show or these uh, uh, videos on here, and I do like talking about the issues with the movie, especially in a humorous way. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's one of the things I like about it is that it gives me a point to sit here and say that you know, like yeah. I enjoyed the movie for an X-Men movie. It wasn't bad. Uh, but then on the same note, for an X-Men movie, it was really bad. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of, if, if that makes any sense. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, just go in and take it for what it is. Okay, fine. But there is a lot to be said about, like, gosh, you know, some of these movies were really good. How do they just screw it up so royally, you know? And, and, and it, But different people write them. Yeah, and failing upwards, like, that is a perfect statement for that yeah <laughs> i think i'll leave it on that note thanks guys for watching please like and subscribe